I am a writer. I am not a speaker. I apologize in advance. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for. Oh, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Zach, for uh, noticing my nice jacket. I um, I'm rather fond of this jacket. I don't know if you can tell from the smile on my face. I uh, I feel quite good about it. I, I I thought long and hard about what I was going to wear today. I've never. I've never talked at one of these things before. I've never even attended one of these things before. And I didn't really know, have any idea what I was doing. It's probably becoming quite clear to you now that I still don't actually have any idea what I am doing. But I thought at least wearing this jacket would make me feel a little bit, you know, comfortable, a bit confident. Kind of a, yeah, give me a little bit of an edge. I think it makes me look a little uh, professorial, maybe? No, maybe? A little bit, up the back? Phew. A little bit of history about this jacket. I got it in uh, Canada, Brian Moss's country. Yep, oh Canada. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it was made there, it was probably made in England. Um, yeah, my, my family's all scattered around the globe these days and we went to uh, British Columbia, Salt Spring Island for a bit of a family reunion. And uh, as so often happens with these kind of family events, there was a lot of time to kill. And I killed mine in an op shop, just kind of you know flicking through the racks, wandering about. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, whoa, this thing looking kind of resplendent against the muted mess of the rest of the rags. And I thought, that is a dope jacket. That's kind of dapper. If that even vaguely fits, I should, I should get it. It is a little bit short, I admit. But uh, I don't know. I, I really like it. All right. And it was $12. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Those that know me will appreciate how much I love a good bargain. It actually cost me more to dry clean it than it did to get it. Actually, that's not entirely true. I did get that as a little bit of a deal. I have this kind of creepy cream colored suit that I needed to get some 12 year old chocolate stains out of. <laughs> Had a bit of a party to go to, Studio 54 party, so I couldn't really wear this one. This is more of a, more of a special occasions jacket, you know? That's why I'm wearing it today. This is a special occasion, I think. And, uh, you know, it makes me feel, makes me feel good. Makes feel pretty good. I'm not sure I'd be able to give this talk if I wasn't wearing this jacket. I'd probably be like uh, sweating profusely, although it is kind of warm. It's a very warm jacket I've got in Canada. But it is integral to my talk, I think, because I couldn't be able to give it without the jacket. It's kind of it's kind of so integral. If you'll if you'll bear with me just for a second. Hmm. Look up here. <laughs> what have we got there? Yeah, there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? Kind of puts things in the right place. There we go. Who's that guy? <laughs> yeah. My awesome jacket. I think so. After all, they say that the clothes make it the man, and the man, the, this man at least, is giving the talk. But, um, huh. I'm seeing a I'm seeing a couple of kind of blank looks. Have I, have I, gone, have I gone too far? Does anyone actually care about my jacket? Sorry? Why, why is it pronounced as doubled? It's my style. <laughs> kind of like this jacket, a little old fashioned. I don't know. <laughs> Can't be held by a single set of pieces. No, no, it's... it's <laughs> If it does, it's just going to pop out, you know. It needs a microphone going around to keep track of the whole thing. But yeah, maybe, maybe I've, uh, <laughs> like I said, I've never done this before. Maybe I got a little bit carried away here. Uh, let me just, uh, let me just re re regroup. I think I've been thinking about this for so long now, you know, getting anxious about it, that maybe I've become Maybe I got a little too attached to the whole idea of my jacket being so important in my talk. After all, my talk is, was about questions. And I have a lot of questions, and we'll get to that in a minute. I'm hoping, God, I hope I can draw a parallel to documentation with this kind of gaff. Let me just, let me just pull back a second. Let me think about my users. Who is my users? Who's my audience? It's you, isn't it? Hello, there you are. <laughs> That's not live, by the way, I took that earlier. 
and I think the room's changed a little bit. Phew, it's everyone here. And we're all here now, we're all present. You're here right now, right here right now. A little Chemical Brothers song for you. And I had a bit of a guess earlier, thinking about my users, as to who might be representative here. And I'll just pop up. Here's my guess. 34% writers, one third. I reckon half of you are developers. And I've kind of just factored in one sixth the other, just to kind of cover my ass a little bit. But you're here right now, I can ask you. So would you guys oblige me with a little bit of audience participation? If you're a writer, can you just pop up your hand nice and high? Okay, I'm actually gonna count you, so hold it there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not, I'm not gonna count you. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm gonna write that up. If you're a developer, if you're a coder, programmer, you create the product, that kind of thing. Oh, one, two, I'll count you now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hmm, and if you're, if you're none of those, if you're a primary school teacher or a firefighter or something, if you're other, we've got one, two, three, and four. All right, who's really good at addition? That's perfect, can you tell me? Uh, uh, oh, what is, is that a four? I'm not sure, it's like an, it's an L1. Uh, let me see, what do we got here? It is, excellent. Actually, let me just, uh, what do we got here? Let's start with a four. B, what's the second number? 16. What have I done? Up here. Someone was asking earlier what we use. This is what I personally use. This is a docbook XML that I'm rendering with Publican. I hope I saved that. <laughs> right, my awesome jacket, thank you very much. And there we go. So I'm off. I am off. I'm curious, I had a bit of a guess. What could I have done to improve my guess. I'm interested in hearing from you now. What measures, how do I know? If it's not a guess, how do I know? <laughs> Lucy. Yep. I don't know if they'd share the information with me, but that's certainly an option. The room has changed somewhat as well. It has, that's true. But, uh, I did think about cheating like that. I did. <laughs> yes? I only have one, one app that's my request. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so game the system. Any more? Any more? Now, I will buy a drink to anyone who contributes. Anyone? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I could ask you, yeah. In truth, what I did was ask some people who were at last year's, and that I think was represented at one point in time. So I did kind of cheat. But yeah, exactly, I can ask. And now I've totally lost where I am. <laughs> I'm in Geelong, goodness me. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, well, anyway. We are still writers and developers at least, right? Yeah? That's true? Yes, says Jody. Which means, failing everything else, my sub subheading is at least accurate. There's a problem there, isn't it? I mean, this jacket is awesome, but it's not important. But my sub subheading is important. Now, I've kind of, I'm gonna have to jump back into here. I'm gonna have to do this again. I feel as though, I might be almost wasting your time. Let me just, it's important to have the right name, isn't it? Rebuild that. All right, that's better. I have left the picture there because I think it's pretty cool. Look, look at that guy. How are you? So the old title, 
It's a bit too much information, wasn't it? Yeah, about the jacket. Back jacket's not important. And it got in the way. I don't like it when things get in the way. Who decides how much is too much information? The reader. You do. Nah. nah. I like to reuse content. Do you guys? <laughs> Ultimately, you decide. The success or failure of this talk is contingent on me providing you with something. Some kind of relevant information. I realize now that the, all the talk about the jacket, it was a, it's a behind the scenes function. It's back end. It doesn't need to be brought into the fore. It's too much information. It gets in the way. I don't like it when things get in the way. I am a technical writer. Documentation is kind of how I make a living. It's where I earn all my money. My personal approach to documentation, it's all about speed. I'm Clint Eastwood and we're Eagles there. I'm in and out. Just the facts, ma'am. Thank you very much. I don't want to be, I don't want to be messing around. I don't want to know about edge cases X, Y, and Z. I don't want 5,000 words of glistening mane. <laughs> I don't want to know about 19th century submarine telegraphy methods and how they've influenced modern text editors. If I want to do something, I want to do that something. I just want to do that something. I don't want things to get in the way. I have a question. Does everyone use documentation here? Does anyone not use documentation here? Thank God. <laughs> for one, it means I still have a job. And for two, it means we can continue. It's going to get a little bit weird. I'm curious, how many of you are like me? Not with the jacket, but how many of you are Clint Eastwood? You're in and out. You just want the facts. That's what you're using documentation for. You don't want any of this. Yeah, one, two, just pop them up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's about half. Who's different? Who's the opposite? Who wants the supplementary information? I suspect you do. <laughs> Not to specifically point you out. Who wants appendices? Who wants a weighty tome that can answer any query, provided the right incantation can be uttered? Got one, two, hands up high. Don't be ashamed, it's all right. One, two, three, four, you're getting right into it. Five, six, less than half. And third option coming through from the blind side. Who thinks that that's all a bit absurd? That's the, that's the wrong slide, but I'll leave it there. Who thinks it's a bit weird having a dichotomy like that, that it's actually context specific, you know? Sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other, and even the twain shall in fact meet. That's me. All right, again, excellent. Where are we? I do have another question for you. That's my reuse has uh, given away. Earlier we thought about how I would know who my audience is, what the breakup is. How do we know, I'd like to extend it, to readers of documentation? I presume the reason that we're here is because we actually have a hand in documentation, whether real product that needs to be documented or whether we actually create the documentation itself. How do we know who our audience is? What measures can we take? You know? Who are our users and what are they trying to do? In fact, I'm going to do that again with an Austrian accent. Who are our users and what do they want to do? That was terrible. I'm sorry. I actually, I will apologize for that. <laughs> the, the hands got in the way. What can we do? How do we know more about our users? How do we? These, are, these aren't rhetorical questions. I actually would like some input here. I'm literally drowning up here. Yes. Possibly, possibly. I, uh, I write for a product called uh, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. I'm really glad I could think of that. When I first started, we were told, write this to sysadmins, sysadmin levels. And so a lot of the questions I was new to Linux at the time, I was like, ah, oh, sysadmins will know this, sysadmins will know this. Later on, we learned that a lot of those sysadmins had a strictly Windows background that had Linux thrust upon them. 
they're sysadmins, but what's their background? How do we know what, who they are? How do we know what they want to do? Jody? Probably ask them. Ask them. Yeah, right. what I was told, that we had to actually bring the level of our documentation down a little bit. Mm -hmm. For some... Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My opinion is that we still need to have some reference, some more detailed stuff somewhere. And preferably not at the end of the documentation which said, yeah, well, everything else gets written. Throw it in the appendix. <laughs> Don't know where to put it, throw it in the appendix. Go on, no one will notice. Yeah, I, uh, I actually don't have any answers. In fact, all I have are questions. Which is really convenient because it'd be kind of weird otherwise. So, we do actually want to get to afternoon tea, so I'll, I'll start my talk. <laughs> If you won't mind, I'll actually read this for the most part. I'm not much of a speaker. I have questions. It's the writer in me. I'm curious. I like problems because I like problem solving. I have an interesting position where I am because if I'm writing about it, I'm using it. I have to. It's, well, it's the best way, I think, that I answer questions. I learn by doing. That's my particular learning style. That's what I like. I am user zero. But as users here, I have questions. Sometimes I just ask those questions to myself and I go, huh, that's a good question. It'll sit there fermenting in the back of my brain. Sometimes I have a lot of questions to the point where I can't even ask the Googleos. The Googleos won't even tell me. I have all manner of questions. Questions as a user, but also questions that preempt a user's experience with the product. And sometimes these questions keep me up at night, and that's when I'm like, I've been working too much. Let's go mountain biking. Let's step back, step back. Sometimes, oftentimes, I like to think, users might have a different opinion, I can answer all of my own questions, and that's great. But sometimes I can't. Sometimes that's not enough, and I have to ask questions. And I think the best person to ask is the person that worked on it, the developers. This has been covered earlier. Kind of almost makes me redundant. But I do have questions. What does it do? What need does it solve? How does it do it? When do I use it? Why would I use it like that and why not like this? Why doesn't it work? That's a question that plagues me. What do I need to do first to get it to work? And why does it still not work after I've done that? What does this error mean? Where did you find that? How do you know? Why is it still not damn working? <laughs> what if? That's a particular favorite of mine. What if? That's when I get to put the customer hat like directly on. And it, it's kind of like a crown. It, it's a long story. What if? All hosts in the cluster need to be upgraded at the same time. That's a fair point. It almost sounds like it comes from documentation. But what if I can't? What if that's actually not feasible? What if I don't have the resources to do that? What then? How much flexibility do we have? What's the plan? Who is the user? What are they doing? What do they want to do? Who is our user and what do they want to do? And how do we find out? And how do we find out if they want to know more about my jacket? 
Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Andrew Burden. I'm a technical writer for Red Hat, and you've been a wonderful audience. And you've been great. <laughs>